Let me begin before everything got all cockeyed and deadly and confused. Before Sue Longtree and Daddy Longtree in the orchard, and Cowper, and that bridge out of this despicable city. I blame a lot of this on my tailor, on that suave suit I was promised. But I suppose if I wanted to go back before any of this, I'd end up starting just after the dinosaurs were hacked to death by the wind and the earth, and rotted away into fuel and dirt. And where do you begin a story anyway? Do you select some random point? Or is there a tangible place that can be flipped over and pinpointed? This is where everything started, you'd like to say. But any moment is a random accumulation of identical moments. There's not a definite beginning to anything. The idea of a beginning is a turgid con. There can't be a beginning when everything is at an end. I'm not a writer. I'm something more like a transcriber of degeneracy and hatred. Had I any poetic talents, I would be talking about something better. Birds in migration, the pleasantries of intoxicated guests at a cottage on the Cape, beautiful women having a picnic on a rooftop, flowers peeling back to let in the morning. But no. Instead, I'm talking about the rotting dinosaurs and wretched people who have built this city with their capricious greed and cynicism. I should say that nothing about this makes any kind of sense. There's no solution. I don't really know who's responsible, whether anything criminal has been committed by others. What my involvement in the Long Tree situation really consisted of, or even if it consisted of anything other than a psychotic redhead's unquenchable love of her own self. And what I remember about Sue Long Tree, the wave of that red hair, a smile that had in its parted lips a riddle with no punchline, a scent, a stupid hope, a hand grasping my arm at a symphony performance. Why'd you do it, Joan? Cowper says from across the bridge. I say, I guess I haven't slept too well lately. And that should have been enough, but it wasn't, and it isn't. The river is down below like a dark, wavering sheet, and the men are closing in for the big squeeze, Cowper leading them, his face of featureless blank in relief against the massive spotlight behind him. I swing a leg over the metal railing, and then the other leg, balancing on the parapet like some mad acrobatic fool. The men's hard-bottomed shoes pound the concrete behind me, and they're breathing heavy, and I can almost feel their arms pulling me back. It's funny, but the water below is so flat, it looks like I could bounce right off the surface and caroom back under the bridge and find it empty of these animals in uniforms, replaced by daylight and a view of the city that hasn't been erased by the rain. And maybe that's exactly what I will do when I'm ready. The river is getting closer, its contours in the night like an approximation of what I imagine the afterlife to be, black, trembling, and not nearly deep enough. I put a foot out and my shoe drops off. I don't hear it plop into the river. Hey! Cowper yells. Don't do that! So where do I begin when there's nowhere to begin? The morning I found Sue Longtree in my office, I'd spent listening to a record of the adagio from a Mozart piano concerto and I thought to myself that it was the simplest interpretation of innocence I'd ever pried out of the world. That sound, a soft piano fading, would be a halfway decent beginning, except that I'd forgotten the tune it belonged to. But anywhere, anybody, is at least a halfway good beginning, if such things exist.